Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and in this free Cinema 4D plugin video, we're going to be having a look at a plugin called um, Spline Guide. Um, so I suppose we'd better just jump straight into it, keep things nice and short. I'm going to create a sphere, like so, and I'm going to uh, attach hair to it. So make sure the sphere is uh, selected, and then simulate hair objects, add hair. We get this. Uh, if we actually select the air ob object and look in the guides tab, we can see we've got a count of um, 256 there. Uh, I'm going to keep it as that for now and just uh, I increase the segments just so they're a little bit smoother. I'm also going to make them a bit longer as well. So that we'll have something like this. And if we press play, uh, in fact, let's add some more time on our clock. 30 seconds. Uh, I think 10 seconds should be enough. Stretch that out, press play. We get something like this. Now, as you can see, that we got some, the roots are kind of holding their shape at the top there, and um, I don't want that. So I'm going to go into the dynamic uh, dynamics tag even, and I'm going to change this hold root setting in the properties. I'm going to make this zero. So now you can see that they fall through our object, which is great. And this stiffness at the end here, I'm going to put that to zero. And that actually kind of smooths it out. It kind of looks like silky, silky smooth hair there. Okay, so something else that I don't want. Every time I rever uh, rewind this, I don't want to have to be back at this position. So what I'm going to do is hit play and let it fall. And just let it rest for a bit. So something like this. And with the hair selected, you can go up to simulate, hair edit. And then you've got this set as dynamic. So that's kind of like setting the initial state. And if we rewind, now it, it's at this initial state to begin with. Okay. So now we've got that done. I'm going to actually need something to guide the hairs. Hence the name spline guide. I'm going to uh, create a spline. I'm going to choose a helix. Uh, I'm going to orientate it XZ. So it's like this. I'm also going to shrink down the start and end radius to 100. Uh, wrong button, Sam. We'll get there in a minute. There we go. And the end angle I'm going to double as well. So I can just type times 2. There we go. And the height of this, mm, 260, something like that. Yeah, that should be enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this off to the side here. And uh, that should be um, good enough for us. Right, on to the plugin then. Uh, in installs is the same as many other plugins. You just put it in the plugin folder. Um, and you'll find that in uh, the C, C drive under Maxon. Uh, and then it will show up in this list of uh, stuff. Here we go, spline guide. So we create that. I'm just going to drag this down the bottom. First thing you'll notice is we've got this kind of full out shape around our sphere. And this is actually the spline guide. So I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. There we go. So it encompasses all our hairs. And the way this works is any hairs inside of this, they'll be affected by this spline guide plugin. So I'm going to just drag it off to one side for now. Let's look at some of the uh, properties in the object tab. This is all um, basic coordinates, you know, same as usual. But in the object tag, it's saying hair selection. So we've got to grab our hair and put that in there. Then it's saying spline. So let's grab our helix and put that in there. And uh, I'm not going to mess with anything. Let's just hit play and see what happens. Okay, not much is happening at the moment, but we've got to drag this over. And they're all attracted to that spline. Looks a little bit ropey, no pun intended, but we can clean that up. Um, maybe we do need more than 10 seconds on the clock. Let's make it 15. So you can see that they're all attracted to this now, this helix, which is uh, pretty cool. Okay, so what else have we got? We have this strength. So if we put this all the way down to zero, you can see that the strength of this completely falls off. But let's whack it up by a couple of percent. In fact, let's let this loop on itself. Okay, so we're back. I'm going to put the strength up by maybe 4%. And you can see that it's trying to lift that up to its sort of target, but it's not quite enough. So you can actually use that to generate some kind of um, swirling animation for your hair. That could be useful. So let's whack it up a little bit more. So that's 5%. Ooh, a little bit. 6 And obviously, as you increase, it's uh, more likely to actually reach its target. 
And there we are. So it reached there. But there's a lot of um, noise going on. So let's just whack the strength right up to 100. And that should sort it out. In fact, we can hide our sphere. We don't actually need the sphere. We just needed it to generate our hair. And the spline guide fall off. I'm just going to hide the spline guide as well. Keep our um, viewport nice and clear. Okay, so the next thing on our list then. Uh, we already covered the radius. The power. Right, so the power is not the same as the strength. Uh, the power is actually the rate of acceleration that it gets to this strength at. So this strength could be seen as its holding power once is it once it reaches its destination or if it ever reaches it based on this strength slider and the power is the acceleration so if i go back to the beginning you can see that it whips up and there you have it so let's drop this power down to one and then restart you can see that it takes a lot longer to get there and actually falls off a little bit so let's uh, crank that this up to maybe three that could be better and start again so again a lot slower but it does get there okay and also our you can see the segments in our splines here so i'm going to go back to the hair go back to guides and i'm just it's got 20 segments but i'm going to give it 40. there we go now remember these are just guides and in fact i'm going to make the length a little bit longer as well Two, I said a little bit, quite a lot actually, 2,000. <laughs> so let's go back to our spline guide, and I'm going to put the power back up to maybe something like 8. There we go, so it reached its destination and then drops back down. Okay, now remember, these are just the guides, okay? So these actually guide our actual hairs. So we've got a count of 266. We may not even need that many, so let's drop this down to 150. There we go. This is the kind of result that we get. In fact, I think 2,000 is probably a little bit too long, so maybe 1,500. Yeah, they're kind of slipping off the edge there. Okay, so let's have a look at this spline guide here. So we've got the power. Right, the invert. This basically inverts the direction of the spline. You can see the hairs are attracted to the bottom part of this here. But what if we wanted it at the top? That's exactly what this invert does. So instead of at the bottom, they're attracted to the top of it. Going back to my hair, now that it's at the top, I think I will have 2,000. There we go. Yeah, that's good. So, you know, this is covering quite a large proportion of it. And also we can move our spline as well. So, you know, actually has an effect on the hair and it will connect like so. And even when this is too far away, this will still pine for the uh, target, if you like. But once it reaches it, it calms down a bit. And there we go. Okay, on to the next thing. So in the spline guide, um, we've got this fix to root and fix. So if I fix to root now, it will fix itself to um, to it. And you can, you can unattach it as well by pressing this restore. And you've also got this fix as well. And once we hit the fix, it basically says, right, I want to go there. I've, and once you said fix, you can actually offset it. So if I do this now, you'll see that the hair sort of scooches around the position on the helix. I'm actually going to restore this back to what it was. Something else you should note as well, we've got these thickness... Um, they're kind of like uh, splines that will determine these things. So we've got thickness. If I crank this up to, say, 500, you can see that the hairs get separated out. I mean, that's overkill, that is. Let's try 100. There we go. So these guides have been separated out and are now thicker, if you like. And this actually determines how the thicknesses work. So at the beginning of the hair, it's hardly anything, and as it gets to the end, it thickens out. Now, we could actually affect this by bringing this down, and you'll see that it, it's not that thick anymore. Or we could even have it halfway. And we could even add an extra point here and say, well, in the middle, it's really, really thick. You know, so you can really sort of hone what you want to do there. Okay, so I'm just going to put that back. Um, we've got this um, torsion. 
I'm, I gather they mean tension. Uh, I'm going to put the thickness back down to zero. And I'm going to put the torsion back down to zero as well. Okay. So let's increase this and see if this actually does anything. I think this is actually just the tension in the hair, maybe. Um, I'm not quite sure about this one. It doesn't appear to be doing anything, but then again, I could be wrong. Let's, um, maybe if we give it a bit of thickness, it might actually allow us to see what's happening. So if we zoom in here a little bit, torsion, I'm going to put something like 360. I actually think this might be something to do with the either the tension or the twist of the hair. Like I said, I don't want this video to last forever, so I'm not going to dwell too much on these things. I've only had a quick play with this. Noise, uh, that's kind of self-explanatory, I should imagine. So let's add 150% noise. And there you go. There's a lot of noise there. I think that pretty much explains what that does. Um, let's make this 50%. Yeah, so it kind of just messes it up a little bit. So let's get back to the beginning. Yeah, it adds a lot of noise. So we've got some fuzz and other stuff going on there. So really, that's um, that covers everything that the plugin actually does. A lot of these settings can actually be um, tamed and tailored with the hair in conjunction with this stuff. Uh, I'm going to drop the noise back down to 20 or even a really small amount of noise, actually. Okay, so we've got our guides there. Um, da -da -da -da. Let's put our power back on 10. Let's actually go back to our hair and have a look at that. Great, what about hairs? Well, at present, we've got about 5,000 hairs. So I'm actually going to drop this down to maybe 2,000. And... <laughs> Let's give them quite a lot of segments just to make them pretty. Now, as you can see, I've changed that. Nothing's changed, even if we rewind and go back like this. Not a lot is happening. Yeah, so if we go to uh, Generate, um, we've got Render Hairs ticked on. And if we go down here and choose Flat, it'll actually generate hairs in the viewport. Um, but be warned, depending on your settings, this can be quite heavy. So like, if I go back to the beginning and press Play, you can see that that's having a right old time. I mean, it's slow, but it's still doing it, which is pretty cool. And if we click off the hair object, you can see that our guides are no longer visible. We can also make these hairs a little bit more visible. It's got a hair material already on it, but I'm actually going to get rid of that. Um, because these are now a polygon object, well, uh, they're being generated, uh, generated polys. I can use a normal material, so I'm just going to actually change this to a red material and plonk this on our hair. And that actually gives us a good sort of preview of what these hairs will look like in the viewport. So let's have a look at some of the other settings then. So now we've generated our hairs. Let's um, go back to the hairs. And we've got a count of 2,000 segments of 100. But we've also got this cloning feature here. So if I put this up by one, it will clone the hairs already there and um, make this look a lot thicker. So if I rendered now, you know, that's pretty quick. You can see our sphere's been rendered there. We can actually turn that off in the render as well. <laughs> that didn't help. Let's play this again. Now, because I've turned those clones on, you can see that it's a lot, lot slower now. But that should do us. Let's do that and render. And there we go. We've got our hairs. You can still see that it looks like, you know, there's not enough segments in this stuff. And I I get the feeling that in our hair, is it the guides that may be doing that? Clones, da, da 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 Let's test it. Let's whack the segments for the for the guides up as well. And you can see that it's really, really chugging now. As you can see, they're being smoothed out rather nicely. But yeah, all these settings matter to get your result. And again, while you're working, you don't have to have this many um, guides. I mean, I could drop this down to 20 and drop the segments down to 20. Just to... There we go, a lot quicker. But the hair is not going to be as tight because there's fewer guides. So there's fewer guides for this hair to sort of be guided 
guided by, if you like. So you've got to watch that. I'm going to put this back up to 150. There we go. Good stuff. So what else can we talk about in the hair? Uh, not a lot, really. Uh, I think we covered it. So, yeah, it's a, it's between guides, hairs, and obviously you've got to generate your hairs. And, um, you know, don't forget about the, uh, the cloning settings as well. Uh, I'm sure there's much more you can do in conjunction with this, uh, with the actual hair, hair object and the spline guide. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview. And, um, yeah, this plugin's free. Go pick it up. I'll put a link in the description on YouTube and on the uh, page on my website. Um, so go check that out and, and grab it. All right, guys, that's it. For my viewers on YouTube, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can check out content at digitalmeet.uk where you can filter my tutorials by category and vote in the poll for upcoming tutorials. You can also follow me on social media, links in the description and the footer of my website. If you'd like to help support Digital Meet, this can be done via Patreon or the support page on the website. But if you want to help Digital Meet keep going and bag yourself some extra in-depth tutorial content, the Prime membership is available for purchase in the store. This will grant you access to the Prime membership area of the website. I also have a second YouTube channel called Beef Doctor, which is a bit of a dumping ground for non-3D content and where I'm streaming games. There's a link in the description and the footer of digitalmeet.uk. I hope to see you guys in the chat. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.